Yes, uh, I, Amy, I believe that's uh, you. Sorry, uh, you kind of uh, cut off there. But, uh, yeah, we're talking about one of the most serious pallet yard fires. That, or, or I shouldn't even say pallet yard fires, just extremely combustible industrial fires that we've ever seen. We're in the city of Carson. I just want to show you the wide shot so we can uh, show you with our map tracker where exactly we're talking about here. So we're in between Avalon Boulevard. We're west of Avalon, north of Gardena Boulevard, and south of Alondra in an, an extremely dense uh, industrial area uh, here right now. You see LA County Fire doing all they can to just try to contain uh, this extremely destructive fire. It's some sort of, of paper products, we can tell. And this lot is uh, packed as densely as it possibly could and it, it, this may as well just be, I, I was saying earlier, when we were talking on uh, CBSN, this may as well just be five tons of matchsticks burning because that's uh, basically, you know, the, the same combustibility that we're talking about. Uh, th I don't know that I've ever seen an area packed so densely with so much that can burn uh, here. And, you know, we're talking about some winds blowing as well, and not just a dense yard, but a dense industrial area. These buildings here are beginning to uh, catch fire and. Uh, it, you know, Amy, going into defensive mode at this point, it's just uh, very difficult for L.A. County Fire to uh, to do much to, but to try to contain this. And even just, you know, containing this is proving incredibly difficult. Now, Desmond, I know that you have been overhead, so you've been watching this. We're watching as these pallets and it looks like maybe some boxes have gone up in flames. But we are noticing now that these flames have, in fact, spread over to the other building here next to it, as well as it looked like when your shot was a little wider, also some trucks that were in the other lot uh, more to the left of the screen. It looked like there were some trucks that had also caught on fire there. Yeah, yeah ab absolutely. And this happened so quickly. When we first got to the scene, it was just this area that was burning. And in less than 10 minutes, this entire lot uh, caught fire. Just a, an incredibly, incredibly hot fire with the most combustible material. And we just heard that LA County fire is officially going into defensive mode. And this this fire caught, caught up uh, to an engine really, really quickly in, in a matter of a second. So you can't even see it now. It's, it's behind this area. But just before this wall went up in flames, there was an engine that was right there it was surrounded by all this combustible material and they had to make a really really quick evacuation they couldn't even unhook their hoses we watched them uh you know with really great alacrity moving out of that area dragging the hoses to get back to a safe area so yeah. we heard that they went into defensive mode so you know we're not going to see them look at how quickly yeah. now this this building beginning to burn uh with the with the rooftop so that's you know they're not even going to be able to get firefighters on the roof now it's just too dangerous for them the best they can do is get around the periphery with these, you know, hook and ladders and, and some of these, you know, really powerful hose lines from a distance and, and try to prevent it from spreading any further. And, and Desmond, we do want to let our viewers know that on the right of the screen is the shot of this fire a little earlier, about five minutes or so ago, when you could just see those intense flames just engulfing this area, all of those pallets and boxes. And this was actually before it seemed that it spread to those nearby trucks, those trailers there. And before we saw the thick black smoke uh, coming from that building, this has really spread quickly. You can see that wind just pushing those flames, such a thick black smoke rising from this area. Certainly, um, as you mentioned, Desmond, firefighters are really working hard to contain this, but this is certainly a tough fire for them to battle with what you were talking about so many combustible items there yeah no doubt about it and you know you mentioned the winds and here I just want to show you these palm trees I mean it doesn't look like much but if you just get winds uh, you know above five or, or ten miles an hour and they're moving to the east you can see the the effects that it has on this fire incredibly hot flames that now have you know even more fuel now to to change direction and that's you know partly how this fire is spread so quickly and to these the surrounding buildings. It's unclear if this is all one business or if these are multiple businesses. When I was just uh, trying to get a, uh, I was looking at the map earlier and, and it looked like there were quite a few separate businesses. Uh, this is a very, very dense area. Some pallet yards have what you might call, you know, a really good buffer around themselves uh, as far as from other surrounding businesses and they're easier to contain. But unfortunately that is not the case with with uh, this, this packing facility. We keep saying pallet yard because that's what was first 
reported. I haven't actually seen any wood pallets here. Just looking at what looks like to be a lot of uh, paper material, some sort of uh, distribution center or, or, or a packing facility. And it is just all gone up in flames and turned into uh, a, a catastrophic industrial fire here in Carson. And, and Desmond, have you heard of, I know that you were talking about that engine that was in the, uh, uh, the area there that uh, had been burning, but have you heard of any injuries at all on the ground or with uh, firefighters? Uh, we have not heard about any uh, injuries uh, at, this, at this point. Those uh, firefighters were able to get out uh, safely and get over towards Avalon Boulevard at the top uh, of the shop. But it, it was looking really scary there for a minute because the fire was spreading so quickly and we still saw that engine there, but uh, they were able to get out uh, in the nick of time. Uh, I just want to widen out and show you the, the, the closest home. So there's still a pretty good distance uh, as far as where we're looking at with, with, with homes or, or anything like that. But, um, but boy, I'm, I'm just really concerned about this huge distribution facility right here, especially, you know, we've been talking so much about these supply chain issues that we have and mm -hmm. uh, how critical every link is. And now, you know, this, this could be a, a, another crimp in, in that whole system, depending on, you know, what, what this is that was being stored here. And, and, you know, Desmond, we're watching as they're putting fire on this, but they're uh, water on this fire, but uh, still so many flames here in this area. As you mentioned, uh, what is burning looks very combustible. Um, it looked as though there were boxes or some type of paper there, and they're certainly burning very uh, quickly there. And that fire moving towards those buildings, we were seeing thick black smoke coming from the buildings. And as you've been mentioning, we aren't sure if that is connected. Uh, we're having a little bit of uh, issue there with the signal, but we are also watching as it appears that the wind is pushing uh, these flames. But uh, when you showed us the trees, we didn't see much movement, but we do know that oftentimes a fire creates its own weather and uh, also whips up wind in a situation like this. Yeah, absolutely. That's what we were seeing is, you know, you have a fire that's burning so hot. Uh, you're right. I mean, you basically change the, the, the pressure uh, and I'm not a weather expert, but in the immediate area, and we were seeing, you know, flaming cardboard fly all over the place. We can actually see some of it right here. This is on the south end of the fire. We're going to try to move around a little bit and uh, maneuver and see if we can get you kind of some, some different angles here. But here you see this is what, you know, really makes firefighters nervous is watching all of these. Look at these little flames. Look how far away this is flying. And, you know, you know I, I'm not sure how strong the winds are in the immediate area, but we might be talking about you know 20 or 30 mile an hour winds just by virtue of how hot it is down here and you have the type of ma ma material that's very light and carries very easily through the air and so this is extremely concerning for the surrounding businesses they have upgraded this to a greater alarm fire so they're going to be summoning even more resources and you know they may need to have uh, wow. firefighters stationed in these neighborhoods uh, so that we don't, you know, hopefully see what we've seen in, in some wildfire situations where you get, you know, a little, a little bit of material, uh, you know, a little ember get underneath one of these eaves and, and start to catch uh, homes on fire. Absolutely, Desmond, and we are watching as this uh, thick black smoke is just uh, can be seen, I'm sure, from miles away, and we're watching as this fire spreads. I was just talking to our meteorologist, Alex Viston, just about the winds in that area. We were just talking about uh, how it appears that the, it almost seems as if a wind is pushing the fire. And Alex has been uh, looking at the situation in Carson. Oh, look at that fire there, just blowing a piece of paper, uh, blowing flames there. And uh, Alex, you were talking about the wind conditions. Oftentimes a fire creates almost its own weather uh, system here, but what are the wind conditions actually yeah, in Carson? Absolutely. Well, Amy, you know what? This is so unfortunate to see because uh, on a day like today, what we don't want to see is a spark because when we have very dry conditions, very warm temperatures with what we're seeing in today is actually the first Santa Ana wind event of the season. These conditions, any spark that does happen uh, can create something like this and create very rapid fire spread. So I am watching current conditions near this area. The closest station that I can
looking fine right now is Long Beach and temperatures in this area between 85 and 90 degrees. Winds out of the northwest and humidity around 27%. So again, it's very dry out there. We don't have a red flag warning in place, but a lot of locations are flirting in that red flag territory. Winds gusting, let's see, anywhere from around 10 to even 15 miles an hour. So of course, wind uh, very much an issue this afternoon as we do see the winds pick up in the afternoon hours. And uh, the bad news is here we will continue to have warm temperatures, very dry conditions as we head into the next few days. Amy. All right, Alex, thank you so much. And uh, if you are just joining us, we are watching a fire in Carson. This is breaking news. This is in an industrial area. Uh, we've been over this for the last uh, 15, 20 minutes. And Desmond Shaw joins us from Sky 9. Desmond, when you had that shot a little wider, it almost looked as though there was a new path of that fire heading down next to these buildings. Yeah, so this is uh, kind of what I was talking about, about this facility just being packed so densely. So the, the main area where all these paper products was right here, but then it, it snakes all the way across the building here. Uh, so this is the, the, the south side of the fire, but look, it extends all the way to the east and it looks like it goes pretty much to the edge of, of the property and pretty close to these other buildings uh, right here. So it's, this isn't just like one little square area. You can see how how spread out it is, almost like, like a T-shape. Uh, and this is really starting to do a number on uh, this building right here. Uh, really, really concerned that it, it's going to, to, to spread to the roof and, and begin to, to chew into this building. It's unclear what is stored inside this industrial area, but you know, talking about uh, distribution facilities, packing facilities, a, a lot of these buildings are probably full of a lot of material. I know there was some kind of metal working uh, business that was in here and, and you know metal uh, burns quite a bit better than than you might think certainly not as as well as as paper but you know that that could be a, another serious situation if they're not able to contain this we only see the only area we see any white smoke coming from is right here on the uh, western edge of the fire and since the winds are blowing to the east you have this ladder truck kind of able to at least try to control this little area and this is probably just it's going to be one of those situations where they're just going to have to let this uh, fuel burn through itself and, and kind of burn out and and just contain it on the peripheries with as much water as they can. Desmond, we do see some uh, people on the roof there um, to the left side of your screen. We do know that uh, they were not able to be on that uh, neighboring building that we did see uh, on fire there, but we do see a number of folks there, firefighters on top of this building. Uh, really just trying to do whatever they can to uh, get this fire out. But when we saw the fire racing up next to this building, were you saying that you had seen more of this uh, paper supply or boxes?